welcome to Big Life Mindset, best life hacks and strategies so you love life more. My name is Eddie Rakanui, and this podcast is in the top 10% most shared worldwide on Spotify. I'm a leadership coach, and my client base include executives, business owners, entrepreneurs, and even winners of the Westpac Bank Innovation Awards. My coaching provides clarity of purpose, prevents burnout, and supports your mental health. This podcast, my coaching, my businesses, and every facet of my life, in fact, are all contributing towards my vision. My vision is to be a global phenom in helping people to love life more. Today's episode is one from our five-minute coaching series. You'll hear from a collection of international business and life coaches, each with their unique take on the problems you face and how to solve them. The format is simple. In their five-minute segment, each coach will introduce themselves, a bit about their coaching offering and how to reach them. But most importantly, they're going to use the bulk of that five minutes to share a problem statement and the solutions. That's right, folks. It's free coaching advice simplified. The order of coaches speaking is chosen at random, and I have no affiliation to them or their businesses. This series is all about sharing some of their value with you in the hope that you pick up one solution to help you live a life you love so you love life more. You're going to hear a short drum sequence at the end of each coach's segment, so stick around and make sure you can get as much of this free coaching advice as you can. Also, a shout out to our partners at Cerberus Strength. You can check out Cerberus Strength at cerberus-strength.co.nz for their latest merchandise and elite sports equipment. Finally, if you're considering investing in yourself or you want your company to support you with professional development, then you can email biglifemindset at gmail.com. That's biglifemindset at gmail.com. And in the subject header, write coffee chat. One of our team will pick that up and we look forward to catching up with you soon. Awesome. Thanks so much, everybody. Can't wait to share some of this value add with you and I look forward to hearing from you. Okay. Bye for now. Our next guest is Shona Johnson. Good morning, Shona. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, good morning. Thank you so much for having me today, Eddie. Um, so my name is Dr. Shona Johnston. I am a pediatrician by background, and I'm also an ICF qualified coach. And I have a particular interest in coaching healthcare professionals around about their well-being. And I like to use my own experiences of working in healthcare and my own, ex uh, own experiences of using healthcare um, to try and make a difference to others. Um, so I offer one-to-one -one coaching packages um, for healthcare professionals, um, along with a number of different workshops which are related to healthcare professional well-being. Um, at the moment, I am talking about a course which I am running soon. So it is on uh, compassionate leadership for healthcare professionals. Um, so the course is going to be looking a little bit about what compassionate leadership is, um, and but most importantly, how people can embed it into their practice and what it really looks like and how it can make a difference both to themselves and to other people. Um, so that is going to be on the 15th of May um, this year, and um, there's details about it on my website. Thanks, Eddie. Ah, fabulous. So tell us a little bit about the problem that you've identified and some practical solutions that can go towards addressing that. Yeah, so the thing that I have chosen to speak about today is about overwhelm and life sometimes often um, can get overwhelming for people and we can often find ourselves in these kind of moments of overwhelm where um, life and thoughts and difficult feelings can pile up on top of us. And I wanted to share some techniques um, with you, which you can use in the moment. And these are techniques which are based on the ACT or Acceptance and Commitment Therapy Framework. And these are techniques which I personally find really useful. I, I use them myself frequently. Um, and, and so the first step is to just stop and to acknowledge how you're feeling. Just to acknowledge and recognize this is a moment of overwhelm recognize that you're thinking that this is a thinking process that you're having and you might be able to say something like oh, thanks brain for giving me all these thoughts thanks brain for making up this story for me 
and also feeling the sensations in your body. And it's just, it's a really quick way of acknowledging how you're feeling rather than pushing those feelings away. And also from sort of separating out your thoughts from yourself and recognizing that you're not your thoughts. And then the next step in the process is to ground yourself in the moment. So this would be for me, what I do personally would be to feel the sensation of my feet against the floor. Other people might want to ground in with the breath or press their fingertips together and feel the sensation of their fingertips together. And this just gets you into contact with the present moment. And once you've grounded yourself, you can take the action that feels most right for you in this moment, so most appropriate to you. And so this might be something like directing your focus on the task at hand, what you've got to be getting on with and doing, it might be asking for help or it might be taking a break. And it's just, I find it a really useful way of slowing down our really busy, busy minds and becoming more present and just focusing on what really, really matters to us in the here and now. And also kind of recognizing what this feeling of overwhelm is trying to tell us. Like, is it trying to tell us that we need some help, that we need to stop doing so much, that, that we need to, and um, prioritize a little bit more. And we know that all pain and suffering is linked to what is really important for us. So it can give us really good clues about what it is that's most important. And as I said earlier, I personally find um, these skills from um, ACT or Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, I find them really, really helpful personally, um, which is why I'm so um, passionate about uh, teaching them to other people. Um, but like all skills, it really needs practice. So it's not necessarily something you can just pick up straight away. Um, it's something that I, I try to do every single day um, to practice um, so that I can get better at this skill. And then finally, I think it's just a really lovely way of being compassionate to yourself and to your situation as well, because um, things are difficult in life um, at times. And I think it's really important to be compassionate to yourself. Um, so I just wanted to finish off by saying that people can reach me either through my website, which is www.drshonajohnstoncoaching.com or by email, emailing me on hello at drshonajohnstoncoaching.com. Thank you. <laughs>
don't try to work on multiple books at the same time because then you have a little bit of a bunch of things and then you don't have a book at the end of the day. So definitely make that decision about what book to write. Another important step is to set aside time right. And I am literally talking about putting it on your schedule. I have to do this myself and I've been a writer my entire life. I am working on a book right now. And if I don't put that on my calendar, it does not get done because there's so many other things competing for my attention. And when I work with people, whether it's one-on-one or when I have my group going, I have them put on their Google calendar when they're going to write this week because it just it makes it a non-negotiable point with yourself and that's really important to get it done another thing is and this will be my last tip for the moment is don't worry about writing the book in order a lot of people think they have to write the book from the beginning to the end and nothing could be further from the truth so i've been a writer you know I've, i was a journalist i still do some freelance journalism I'm a copywriter, et cetera. And I've been writing, I'm 43 now. I've pretty much been paid to write since I was 14 and have done it professionally pretty much full time for the last 25 years. I hardly ever write it in order. You know, it's very hard, especially for a book to write your introduction first because you don't really know what the book is going to be until you start writing it. So it's hard to introduce something that doesn't exist. So I have people come to me all the time. They're like, where should I start writing? I said, well, what story is this burning to get out of you right now? Well, there was one situation I worked with a retired police um, chief and there was a baby, you know, a dead baby that just it really ate at him still. So, you know, he started writing from that story. So you can write, you know, in any order. You can use a coach or an editor. That's also a hat I wear to help you get an order if you need to. But the important thing is to schedule that time to write and don't overthink it. Just start writing where you feel most inspired to write. Thank you, Eddie. Oh, nice. And how can people reach you? So people can reach me. I am on Facebook and LinkedIn. You can look up my name. I also have a book called Three Things You Must Know for Writing Your Book. It's free. It gives some of the tips we discussed today, but some other ones as well, like how much time should you spend writing? You know, is dictating your book going to be an option? Because some people that I've worked with, they're better speakers than writers. And with all the technology we have today, you can speak your book into writing. So you can go to gettheirattentionnow.com forward slash book. That's gettheirattentionnow.com forward slash book. Or you can find me on Facebook or LinkedIn. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Stephanie, for joining us today and sharing those tips. That's going to resonate with a lot of people. I know myself, I got uh, caught up trying to write a book and I think those tips would be brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. All good. Bye for now. So our next guest is Sharon Holland Gelfand. So glad to have you here, Sharon. Would you like to share a little bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you so much for having me, Eddie. I am a certified functional nutritionist, an integrative nutritionist, and a life coach, a speaker, and an author. And I work with women over 40, and I empower them to help them transform their lives, take back control of their health and their well-being so they can heal their body, their soul, their spirit, um, just feel more connected to themselves and others and have more confidence so they can really live a joyful life. And what I've noticed in my practice is how we self-sabotage every day and how that interferes with our ability to move forward, whether it's losing weight or making choices in life, and we go down a rabbit hole. So my new program that I'm offering is a six-week mental fitness program that helps you meet life's challenges with more of a positive mindset than a negative one. This allows us to live life with ease and flow rather than with resistance. Thanks, Eddie. Ah, awesome. And so tell us a little bit about the problem that you've identified and practical solutions that people can use to address that problem. The problem that I want to focus on that I've identified across the board with my coaching is how to take a beat when we're going down the rabbit hole, when we're starting to go down that self-sabotage and we feel out of control. And again, whether it's food 
um, whether we're eating like a whole bag of, uh, or a pint of ice cream, or, or maybe a half a gallon of ice cream or a conversation that we're having with ourselves or with somebody else, how do we stop the reaction? So I want to focus on what we can do. And it's really simple, but it really requires awareness because the answer is to take that, that breath and become aware of your body. We're so disconnected that when we're having a conversation or we're doing something, we're already like in the future or thinking about the past and we're not being present. So that disconnects us from our bodies. And when we feel that way, that throws everything into um, chaos. So this gives us an opportunity to listen to what our body is saying and asking yourself, why am I feeling this way? Where in your body are you feeling it? And what's the emotion that's coming up for you? Because what's happening is it's likely a trigger from a past event or something that you're worrying about in the future that's causing us to have this visceral reaction to the present situation. So practicing awareness, taking a beat, maybe even just like rubbing your fingers together while you're breathing, something to connect yourself, whether again, it's uh, that bag of chips or ice cream or conversation, It'll lead you to asking, how can I respond with compassion and how can I be present and how can I tap into my inner knowing and respond in a way that has less resistance and feels like it's in the flow. And then the more you practice it, the easier it becomes and the more calm you feel. That's my tip for the day. Nice. Fabulous. I really love that. Uh, and so Sharon, how can people get in touch with you? Best way is to go to my website, Sharon Holland with one L.com. You can book a call with me, a complimentary call. You can find my social media and everything else. Easiest way to find me. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that value on the show, Sharon. Really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. All good. Bye for now. Our next guest is Stuart Blythe. Would you like to share a little bit about yourself, Stuart? Thanks very much, Eddie, for inviting me to share some thoughts with your audience. As you said, my name is Stuart Blythe. Um, I am currently based in London. I am an ex-senior corporate executive for many large multinational IT companies, but I have worked in the UK, Europe, Asia, and the US. And I actually grew up in Hong Kong, which gave me a great insight into the ways of the East. And essentially where, where I ended up today was like a lot of people, I ended up with burnout in a corporate job. And so I made my own job up. And this is what I currently do today. And I run a, a boutique uh, consulting company and we have a range of options to help people. We have books. We have digital courses and we have workshops and extended consulting courses around how do you build a great team in your business? Because in our view, it's all about the people. It's not the products and the services. And so people are kind of down the pecking order when business owners and business leaders are looking at how to take their business forward. We unashamedly look at the people angle and the people angle angle only. If people want to see what we do, they can go to our website, which is onlydo.online. I'm freely available on LinkedIn with my name, just Stuart Blythe. And look me up and you'll see me there. If you want to contact me on uh, directly via email, the email address is Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, at onlydo.online. So that's a, that's a little brief bit about my background, what we do, how to reach me. And I think it's important for the listeners to understand what is the problem that we're trying to solve for businesses. And the problem is, is very simple, and it is a universal problem within businesses. And that problem is people. Wherever I go, whoever I talk to, whether the businesses are small or multinational, People always say they have a people problem. I don't have the right team. There's a war for talent. How do I find the right talent? It's really difficult 
to energize the team. And at the end of the day, in our view, products and services are irrelevant. And you could give me any Google search term you like, and I will plug it in, and there'll be 20 million of your competitors sitting there. So you've got 20 million people you're competing with. Your only differentiator can be the quality of your people and the team and the customer experience that they deliver. That's your only real differentiator. So if you are not concentrating on that, there's where the problem lies in your business and your business growth. Having identified the problem is people, it's about creating a strategy for building that team. That's really, really important. And so to give you a practical example, we work uh, uh, with a lot of business owners and business leaders who like sport. And so if I was to go to any elite sports coach and say to them, you know, you had quite a good season last season, you came second or third, what do you need to do to win next year? They will always come back with one or two names of people that they need in that team to make the next step. If you ask any business owner, the majority of them would not have a clue where the problem lies. And so by getting them to think in either a sports context or a theatre context or a music context, if you're going to deliver that performance to your customer, write your team sheet on the board and what they're going to do. That way they can visualise the problem really easily. So if I'm putting together a, a, a Rugby 15 on the board, and that's my project team, it will become very clear to me whether I've got six scrum halves on the pitch, three full backs, no forwards. And, I'm, and you'll then say, I can see why that team is not performing. You need to do that in your business and it will become very evident where the team is lacking. And that's how we do it. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And we often help them using our very special board game. Nicely done, Stuart. Thank you very much. Hey, welcome, everybody. And now we've got Ruhina Mira on, who is going to share some of her value. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Ruhina. Yeah, I'd love to. So hi, everyone. My name is Rohina, like Eddie so kindly introduced me. Um, I am a South Asian American, um, you know, I come from India, a lot of my roots come uh, and are very tied to the, the South Asian and my Indian heritage. Um, and I am an authenticity coach. I work with people to help them understand their truest, deepest, most vibrant, authentic selves by helping them get clear on who they are and understanding the goals they have for themselves outside of the pressures of the world, outside of the noise of society, family, you know, peers, anything external, coming back home to themselves, understand those goals, and then work towards achieving those goals to really help you live a more confident, um, joyous, excited life. And, um, you know, I offer a multitude of things, but the the bigger offerings that I have are actually my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I primarily work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I have a three-month coaching container. Um, I offer these, you know, it's $1,200 uh, for six sessions over the three months, but I do offer discounts. If you decide to pay upfront, it's a hundred dollar discount. Um, and I also offer workshops. I do a lot of workshops with different, you know, expos, or I collaborate with other coaches or other people in the mind uh, mindfulness space and the wellness space. So some things I've done in the past are things like stepping into your authenticity or breaking up with people's perception of you and a host of other workshops, anything that you might be interested in really when it comes to mindfulness and understanding yourself. Nice, nice. So tell us a little bit about the problem that you've identified and practical solutions that people can use to addressing that problem. Yeah, absolutely. Um, happy to do that, Eddie. Um, so the problem that I find is, of course, this is a very well-known problem. We live in a time where depression and anxiety are at an all-time high. 
And while there are, of course, long-term fixes, you know, definitely see a therapist, definitely do what you need to do for your mental health. I find that a good short-term solution for that is for people to really practice an exercise to bringing them back into the present. Um, that's really what mindfulness is all about. It's about being in the present, but that can be hard to do when you have, you know, the um, problems of your day running through your head. You're thinking about 10 steps ahead. Like, oh my God, I need to do X, Y, Z. How do I get all of this done in this much time? When those kind of thoughts are arising, what I really want people to do is take three deep breaths in. So inhale, exhale, and start focusing on your body. So go through, do a, a quick, basically like body scan meditation for yourself. It doesn't have to be very long. It can be a minute, it can be 30 seconds. It can be five minutes, depending on how quickly you want to go through it. But Start becoming aware of yourself. Feel into your you know, forehead, your ears, your nose, your chin. Just, just go through your body. Same thing, you know, go through, feel it into your hips, um, your thighs, all the way down to your feet. And then imagine roots coming out from the bottom of your feet and holding you into the earth. This is a grounding practice, um, which is you know, similar to, to really being in the present. But I find that by doing that, that quells at least in the short term, a lot of the anxieties um, that people are feeling. And the more you start doing this, you will realize this actually has a longer term impact. The anxiety will over time slowly start to dissipate. So it's just a quick fix, but it, if you know properly uh, worked with it, it can also be a long-term fix. Nice. And so how can people reach you? What's, what's some of your contact details? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So my website is www.ruhinamehra.com. Um, that's R-U-H-I-N-A-M-E-H-R-A.com. I'm also on Instagram. So my IG handle is at Ruhina Mehra Coaching. And you're also welcome to email me anytime you have questions or concerns or thoughts or curiosities about the work I do. Um, I'm at ruhinamehra at gmail.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ruhina. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you again for joining me on this episode of Big Life Mindset. Once again, if you're looking for leadership coaching and you want to move your business from where it is into where you want it to be, or you're looking at coaching as an individual and you're looking at setting higher goals and achieving those while reducing burnout, stress, and overwhelm, then please contact me. You can find a link in the show notes, or you can contact me directly on biglifemindset at gmail.com. That's biglifemindset at gmail.com. Simply put coffee chat in the subject header, and we can pick it up from there. All right, thanks again, and we'll catch up soon. Bye for now.